Wände. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be awkward. Um, Future Ben was meant to be doing a review of the latest time story scenario under the mask, and he's gone and locked himself in a cupboard. So uh, it was meant to be part of a bit. Locked in a sarcophagus, Egyptian, the joke really didn't work, honestly. But he's been doubly stupid about this, because he's gone and locked himself in the room containing the cupboard he's locked himself in, and also somehow forgotten that I'm notoriously claustrophobic. So uh, I know you know me as Prophecy of Dragons, Ben, but I thought I might just take the reins on this one. It's been so long long since the last review so if you don't mind we'll just uh, we'll just get to it that's okay um if you're gonna try and escape could you at least be somewhat quiet about it thank you all right let's go Under the Mars sends preferably four agents to ancient Egypt in the year minus 1146 to prevent yet another temporal abnormality happening. And before we begin standard Dicey Exploits rules, I only show the characters, the map, and the first location itself. I'll be talking about mechanics, but I won't be delving too deep, so it's all fresh in your mind. Don't say I do spoil you, because I don't. I really couldn't care less about you. I know art's meant to be all subjective and stuff, but Under the Mask has the best artwork in any Time Stories campaign. Moving on. This campaign also comes with a main mechanic that completely alters the way you think about not only using items, but incorporating them into your playthrough. Your progress may still be determined by pesky dice, although that was actually a reasonable roll. Um... Well, that goes against everything I believe. But the way this mechanic works, you'll be thinking more about how you're approaching runs, rather than worrying about rolling those. Props again. We also found this the most immersive campaign of the lot. Ajib the scribe is, uh, stats-wise, completely useless. And yet there's something on the back of this card that, when we saw it, we just went, wow, I really want to play this here. This is the first time we approached a Time Stories playthrough like a fighting fantasy book, doing little drawings and scribblings alongside everyone playing. It was, it was great. So you might think this surpasses arguably my favorite campaign in the entire series, the first one, Asylum. But it doesn't. And that's not its fault. In fact, it's the fault of the game itself. I'm pretty sure I've already said this, but all Time Stories campaigns seem to come with a dozen things that we find really cool, one awesome thing that breaks away from the game itself that we absolutely adore, and one thing that, why did you put this in? I absolutely despise it. Was it to elongate the case? Because it feels like that's why you put it in thing that, uh, well, we clearly don't like. It's still fun jumping around that trying to fix this temporal puzzle with McGibbon, and it's a really, really good one this time around. But at the same time, there's one area that just emanates bad dice rolls, and it's just a huge time sink. And we found ourselves hitting zero TU multiple times throughout. And once you've played several games of Time Stories, that novelty of having to start the entire campaign again, my goodness, at this point it drains. And it's such a shame because it's not under the mask's fault. It's time stories. No, it's Bob's. It's Bob's. Get him on the line. It was so frustrating because we were basically three quarters of the way through this and yet kept having to reset through no fault of our own. And I almost feel through no fault of the campaigns. Just that's a USP that has to be highlighted in every single game from now on. And I don't know. We almost made a checkpoint system on a point where we knew exactly what we had to do. And so if we ever had to reset, we just start from there. We didn't because that's cheating, but I feel like if you'd have to, well, no one would look down on you for it. Under the Mask would arguably be my favourite Time Stories campaign so far if Asylum didn't exist. But if Asylum didn't exist, then Time Stories wouldn't exist, and Time Stories wouldn't exist, and Under the Mask wouldn't exist. So I'm willing to let this take silver in order to prevent some sort of weird paradox from happening. It's just a shame that I can't talk to you about that really awesome bit that had us all guffawing whenever we were able to. And, you know what? Next Time Stories video, I'm breaking off these spoiler shackles. I'll be discussing with you all the campaigns so far, what I love, what I hate, and delving into minute plot details you might not even care about, just to see exactly what we can expect from the future of the series and what I hope will happen. It's just a shame Future Ben can't get out of that bloody cupboard. It's like, he would have actually answered this question just fine. So. Well, yeah, but he did die. That's why he's been quiet. Yeah, I have a bit of respect.